My father was a warrior and they used to kill many, many, many lions here. He used to tell me how dangerous lions are. I used to hate lions. When I was a young boy, I thought I would be growing up and killing lions. But now we protect the lions. Because if there is no lions in Samburu, it's no life. We found the Narama truck, so we think she's in the area now, so we're going to look for her. We just got a signal, so we just scanning around and uh, see if she's still there. Northern Kenya is one of the few places in the world where you can see livestock, wildlife, people all living together. Hello, boy. Yeah. That there? You see the lion? But when lions are struggling to find food, they come into contact with local communities and often will target livestock. So Jenny said to me, if we want to stop people killing lions, we've got to engage this warrior demographic. He came up with our program, which is called Warrior Watch. For centuries, our tribe depend on their livestock for their livelihood. So as a warrior, we provide security for our livestock and protect our livestock uh, from lions. We go early in the morning before the livestock are released and see where the lions are. If we know the lions are in the area, we go back and spread that awareness within the community so that they can avoid those areas. The same style we use to kill the lions now, we use that knowledge to protect the lions. My tribe are very grateful for Warrior Watch program because that will save their livestock and also will save the lions as well. Our goal is to promote coexistence between people and lions in northern Kenya and make sure that we respond to everything that's happening and that the lions are safe during this very critical time. We have never seen the river dry at this time of the year. There's no enough water to sustain people and wildlife. It's a really, really challenging time right now. Communities are struggling to take their livestock into areas to find enough grazing. There's no water for any of the animals, both livestock and wildlife. The water is underground, and, uh, and this is how we get water for both wildlife and uh, in our livestock, and also for people. This is how we are surviving. Someone have just called us uh, and said that we, he had the gun shot. So we're just going there and check uh, to see if people are shooting those lines. The warriors will respond as soon as they ever hear from any of their network that gunshots have been heard or there's any conflict. The guys respond so quickly. 
cows have just come to lion habitat and the lions are very scared. The lions are scared of the cows because uh, of people. They know that if we kill cows, people will kill them. Hello, where are you? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? So we found out that uh, when the livestock were drinking water, then the elephant came there. So people were shooting up on the air to scare the elephants away. I'm still you know, concerned about the wildlife in general, but luckily it was not lions because we have so few lions. Lions can live with people. Coexistence is possible as long as the people are willing to accept the lion presence and that's what's happened in the last couple of years. People have accepted lions, tolerated them, the lions feel areas that they're safe in and they've just recovered in areas where they never used to be. If you want to make a difference, if you want wildlife to succeed, involve the people who are living with wildlife because really that's the key to their success. Here the Samburu communities are the ones protecting the wildlife and I have a lot of hope because of that. I'm hoping that my community accepting lions, there will be, be lions for the future generations. <laughs>